All right, peoples, this is Ross, the fig boss. I thought I would give you guys an update on the fig trees. We just took a lot of them, as you can see, out of the greenhouse. So I wanna talk about the greenhouse itself, the progress that these trees have kind of made by being in the greenhouse and getting such a head start. We're not even at May 15th yet, and a lot of these trees have fruits showing on the trees. So that's really, really fantastic. That's what we really intended for this whole thing uh, to happen. That's really what we wanted. By giving them plastic earlier in the season, waking them up at an earlier date, we took the top off of this greenhouse, we took the tarp off as we normally keep the tarp on in the winter to keep things warm. We take the tarp off, we let the light in, it really warms things up. And then we have actually a space heater right here that will warm things up even further at night. And uh, with the help of all that, all that additional heat, waking them up at an earlier date. It's not even May 15th, as I said, and we're seeing fruits on almost all the trees, uh, or at the very minimum, we're seeing fruit buds, which means, one, we had adequate light. We got enough light into the, into the canopy of these trees, onto the fruit buds for them to form, and then we saw enough heat units, growing degree days, around 550 is roughly what you need for actually the fruits to form, to be visible. So once we get enough heat days that go by, the fruits will actually show up, which happened roughly around May 1st for me. I saw my first fruits here on this Campanieri tree. And you can actually, what I really want to mention in this video is kind of a, a trade-off. In prior years, I had really cranked up the heat and tried to really get those 550 growing degree days as quickly as I could, because I want really early fruits. The earlier our fruits are, the better the fruit quality is. Historically, at least here in my location, we want them to ripen at the driest and the warmest time of the year. July really is that date. And for about three or four years, I'm not sure if it's three or four, but uh, for three or four years, I had ripe main crop coming out of this greenhouse by July 1st. And those fruits that ripened in early to mid July were fantastic. They're the best. It's like I'm living in California, but I'm not. So the idea and the goal is to get really going forward, I've learned, was to try to get as many fruits to ripen in July as I could. Because it was kind of sparing and here and there, because really what was happening by cranking up that heat in the greenhouse, as I mentioned, we ended up getting a lot of these trees to form fruits actually too soon. And there's a trade-off. So if we get our fruits to ripen by July 1st, the, the branches are usually coming out from dormancy, they're growing, and then shortly after they're waking up, about two to three weeks later, they're actually putting on fruit. And it's visible, and that's really kind of crazy. So the fact that that happens, we have fruits now on these branches at such an early date, there's not a lot of leaves, there's not a lot of foliage to help support the tree in actually producing those fruits, but also to continue growing, the trees kind of just stalled. And they did that for a few years, actually, three to four years. It was nice because I was getting fruits at an early date and it wasn't like the worst thing in the world. But I've learned over time, it's actually better to actually ease into that heat. And we don't want to blast them too soon. We don't want to give them the 550 growing degree days within two or three weeks. We want to really spread that out over like a month maybe even a month and a half. And that's kind of where we're at right now is about a month and a half for most of these trees. And therefore, they were able to grow and put out a lot more growth, a lot more leaves, so that they can continue growing while also putting out fruit. And therefore, I'm actually gonna ripen fruits that really are about two weeks later. So this Campanieri here, knowing the math and knowing how this tree is gonna behave, it should ripen by July 15th. That's a good date, but it's not July 1st, but we are getting a lot more fruits. And you can really obviously tell that by just every leaf on this tree represents a fruit. Um, so that's really uh, a nice little interesting tidbit I think people really ought to know. Uh, let's look at some of these trees. And again, I, I really decided to bring these out simply because we're just not getting a whole lot of light now. Uh, as you can see, by the way, these shade trees above where the sun is kind of coming across, they have leaves on them. So instead the sun was shining right through, hitting this greenhouse. Now, 
it's May, it's around, we're not at May 15th yet, but it's around mid-bay and the greenhouse is shaded. So if the greenhouse is shaded, we're not getting enough light. And every single one of these fig trees is a different variety. And depending on the variety, we could have the fruit buds showing or the fruit buds not showing as it is on this particular branch, on this particular tree, very simply because it needs higher light conditions. Every variety is different. And uh, not only does it need probably higher light conditions, it's just not getting the light because it was just so crowded in there. So, and also the fact that the greenhouse is just not getting a ton of light anymore. So there's all these combinations of things happening that you'll actually notice along this tree, you may consider that that will fruit, that particular bud. You might consider this particular bud would fruit. But as the tree, as this particular tree is growing, and it's also not really staked that well, the branches are very close together. I need to spread this out. I need to get myself some stakes once these branches spread out a bit and then the trees get well adjusted to this outdoor environment they're going to continue their growth and as they get more light now that i've spread the branches out now that they're in eight hours of light minimum this variety will indeed fruit but it's going to be later in the season because i'm going to have to let this grow maybe about six more leaves and then it'll put fruit on those six leaves now this branch over here you could argue, well, it's really far away from the rest of the tree, but in actuality, this tree, this branch here was quite shaded um, inside the greenhouse. So, you know, not every variety in here is gonna fruit. And actually, there is a fruit bud right down there. So as it was leafing out, it had enough light. Um, so this will fruit down here on this node, but the rest of this, that's one, two, three, Four, I should have four more fruits that I just don't on this particular branch. And the same thing with this, I should have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe even eight, 16 more fruits potentially on this side of the tree that I just don't because I didn't get enough light. So the fact that there really is, these trees are just so dense. Um, there's a ton of foliage. And if you put them all together <laughs> in this, really small six by eight greenhouse, as you can kind of see by looking at this, it's just too dense. There's not enough light getting to the fruit buds. So I needed to move out really more than half of the trees. I mean, this whole area was filled with them and then also in the back. So this section here, what's now gonna happen is that now that I've taken those out, we're gonna move these over here and kind of fill in these areas to get more light. And if we don't, as I said, get that light we're going to be in trouble and it's also going to really be we could also be in trouble just to the simple fact that that this greenhouse now that the trees have leafed out these shade trees it's not getting a whole lot of light in general so we're going to have to kind of see what the trade-off is um, the fact that these trees are getting a huge head start to the season these we kind of put in here late these other guys down here that you might see that we looked at they've been in there since early March, or at least that's when we kind of woke them up. So they've been in there for roughly two months. These trees we just put in for maybe a month and you can already see the huge positive benefits. There's a ton of growth on these trees, gave them a head start. In fact, a lot of them actually have fruit buds, but they're getting to that point where it's getting too crowded and some of them just probably won't fruit as much as I would hope. And yeah, it's a nice head start because I'll show you, I mean, that's really the power and the benefit of this greenhouse even further than, even if you could just put them in there for like three to five weeks and give them a head start. Look at the difference between these trees here, which haven't received any head start. They have maybe, you know, two or three leaves on them at this point, and that's it. So two or three new leaves since I took them out from underneath the sunroom, a very natural, normal wake up process. So there is a nice benefit and you can clearly see that by not just those trees that were small and in the greenhouse there we put in late, but also these, I mean, it's, it's intense. So let's keep looking at some of these as we keep talking, but this here is Sucret and it's got a lot of fruits on it. You can tell by those double dots 
on the fruit buds and it's all over the tree. So pretty much every leaf on this tree, maybe not this one here in the center. No, this one here in the center has the double dots. You know, every variety is different and uh, some just require more light than others depending on where they're adapted. This guy here, even though it has really good branching um, and it has really branches that are kind of separated from each other, as I've really focused in on this when we did our pruning in the fall, it still doesn't really have enough light. And a lot of these fruit buds are not gonna form into fruits. This one here will. I know that's tough for you guys to see, but I've talked a lot about this in the past. Maybe this guy up here where, where my thumb is, but I would argue probably this variety, a lot of people would say, oh, it's just not very productive. Um, because it doesn't put out a lot of fruit. But if you had better light, uh, maybe the tree was a bit older, maybe I didn't even have it in this greenhouse, it would produce a lot of fruit. Who's to say it's productive or not? You know, it really depends on um, kind of if you know what you're doing. Here's actually my older Smith tree here. And we've done a really, a really important job of actually pruning this and staking the branches away. As you can see, this branch was staked away from the other branches, the other scaffolds. And even this scaffold in the greenhouse, I had it staked away from the other, um, away from the other scaffolds. And these are kind of the scaffolds down here. There's one, two, three, four. And then we go up the scaffolds, we find the fruiting branches. And if uh, the tree doesn't have too many dense fruiting branches, the fruiting branches are away from each other as presented on this Smith, we actually will see the fruit buds form. And I'll zoom in for this one here just so you guys can see. Those little bumps there are actually are very quite visible on the tree and they're actually forming now. So they're not at the size um, of the Campanieri. As you can see on this tree, they're very visible, but uh, they're there. And I would say probably in another week, they'll look like those other fruits that we just looked at. So, and Smith is, you know, roughly two to three weeks, it should ripen two to three weeks behind Campanieri anyway. So this is just really normally what it'll look like. And by the way, it's all over the, the branches. These, these buds, these fruits are all over the new branches. And it really was a simple fix uh, of just opening up that canopy. And I'll tell you, I also have other Smith trees in here. I have like four or five Smith trees. Let me find, here's a Smith right next to it. And you can see, look, there's the new branches or new, the new fruits. Um, now, if the tree, like this branch here, wasn't getting enough light, it's, a, it's an extremely high light requirement variety. You're just not gonna get the fruit bud uh, formation. Here's actually the fruits forming right there. And the same thing down here. So it's amazing how much more productive these trees can be. And that's another reason why we had to take them out of this greenhouse. Here's another Smith. It's got the fruit buds forming right now along these branches. There's the double dots on this one, on this one, um, maybe on this one. Here's fruits more visibly on these. And then also actually even more visibly on this branch. You can really see them protruding with the shadows there. So is Smith a productive variety? I would say yes. And in fact, I would probably argue that this variety here is probably quite productive. But if I had it in a better location, well, I would have been way better off. So that's kind of this little update here, me taking them out, why we decided to do this, the benefits of the greenhouse, you know, they're gonna fruit. At least all of these will probably fruit by, I would say most of them are gonna fruit around August 1st. Very few and some of them will fruit by July 15th. It's the earliest varieties. Um, the Brabas are gonna fruit and we're able to support those Brabas um, by having them in this warmer environment. They're really far along actually. I'll show you one of those Brabas. And then that's kind of, you know, that's the kind of wraps it up is that what we're doing. Um, now we need to kind of talk about going forward in the next video, you know, what it is that we have to do to actually get these trees well adjusted to this outdoor environment. Another tree with plenty of fruits on it. And uh, 
yeah, we'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. Hope you guys enjoy this one and stay tuned for the next one, all right? Hit that subscribe button. Take care.